Hi there. Here is a <clears throat> summary of some of the things you're going to see in, in, in chapter four of our textbook. Uh, there's no real new content there. It's just um, you've been practicing some R code. It's periodically a good idea just to step back and summarize what you've done, some of the um, code that you've been trying. And so you're going to have these work uh, flow basics and um, these workflow chapters in this textbook that um, we'll kind of throw in with a, a more content heavy chapter. So here's chapter four. And when you, um, you know, when you enter in our studio, you're going to enter in at all different kinds of um, levels. You can see I have only three panes uh, listed here. I've got the environment plane, uh, the output plane here, output where it outputs um, plots, and you can go look up packages and get help and so on. So this is like the output window down here. Uh, this is the console. It says so right here. And we don't have um, a source window or um, content window. And so uh, we're going to start off and uh, go up and open a new or open an existing file. The file that you should open is the one in e-learning. So I'm going to flash over there for just a second. So when you go into the Math 225 content section, you'll see down at the bottom, you have two files. And uh, so I ask you to uh, download the chapter four. And while we're here, we'll download the chapter five uh, RMD files. Now, when you download them, they, they typically go to the uh, downloads file. So that's where I'm going to go find them. All right. So I come up here and then I'm going to open a file and go to my downloads. And there's where we should see chapter four. Now, when I open this up in a new RMD window, you can see that the file comes up. I've got my YAML heading here. And uh, it's always a good idea to install packages. So I'm going to do that here. And you'll see some action down here in the uh, console uh, console uh, panel. You recognize these red lines. When we render this, it'll throw in a horizontal scale. So here are some calculations uh, that you might perform on a calculator. So let's run these. And down here, uh, you're going to have two places where it does the output. When you have an R Markdown found, file set up like this, it'll download the uh, the output right underneath your code. And when you render the, uh, the HTML, then um, the answers will be there in addition to uh, the code. So, you know, just basically a basic in mathematics order of operation stuff, we use PI for pi. <laughs> Another thing that you'll be doing, we can't do anything with these numbers right now, but a lot of times what we'll do, and you're going to be doing a lot in this in this uh, unit is to uh, make an assignment say the variable x is equal to 12 or three times four <clears throat> so you can see this first statement is just to make the assignment and then this next statement x just displays the x to the output screen generically uh, this is not code but um, when you make object names you want to make them so that they're they're meaningful and so you know here are a couple that that you could, it might not be that uh, that long. A lot of times when I'm programming, I like to use the simplest one character names that I can use. Uh, when we run this, you can see just like X is 2.5, we can say, we can define the variable, this is a really long name as a variable and assign it the value 2.5 and then take that variable, multiply it by four and get 10. <clears throat> this one here, it rocks. That first row 41 and that last row 44 are there because of the uh, markdown chunk. If you want to establish an R markdown chunk, just come up here and then hit the down arrow and then say R and it throws one of those in there. And then you can just type whatever you want in there as your code. And here's a piece of code that, that doesn't work. If we just say, you know, R underscore rocks and then try to run that, um, we're basically saying, we don't know what you're talking about our rocks and we just defined it up here but now we're in a new uh, a new chunk and so we don't know what we just did it all has to be part of the same chunk in order to um to run it so as you go from one chunk to the next the assignments you make in one chunk do not necessarily carry over to the next chunk uh, we've got the sequence command we we'll use that we can assign text to a variable it comes back as text so you're going from one to, to 10, that's a length of nine. You're gonna make four steps to get there uh, so that you have five numbers. The length of your sequence is five. And in order to, to, to cover a distance of nine units, 
in four steps, nine divided by four is 2.25. So you have to jump by 2.25. Now there's a two-step piece of code here where I define, make the, uh, the assignment of the variable and then I print it. Anytime you have parentheses around an assignment statement like that, it'll do both steps at the same time. That is, it'll make the assignment that Y is equal to this sequence and then it will print it out. So pretty much the same thing as the previous line, uh, the previous code segment. If you try to run this code segment, control enter here, the assignment, and then when you print it. Now, if they're separated like this, then you really have to run each individually. So if they're together and you run them, then you highlight them together and then control enter, and it'll give you both of them together. You can also insert an R segment and put both of these in the R segment and then run them both together. So, you know, this is supposed to work but here's the original code, and when I highlight these two, um, you'll notice, and then try to run them, uh, it gives me an, an error, and it says that my variable is not found. And so it's very, very subtle, but if you just look here, this is a lowercase i, and this is something I don't know what it is. This might be a, a very, very small number one or something, but it's not the same character. And because it's not the same character, it doesn't recognize that this variable has been defined, and hence will give you the the error that you see there. Okay, so just some basics uh, for chapter four, some of the things that you've been kind of uh, introduced to yet maybe haven't um, practiced or thought about in, in any great detail. So um, assignments are very important. Uh, a lot of times in the sections coming up, uh, you want to you define something and you want to use it later. It's a perfect time to assign this thing. And it can, it can be a value. It can be a string. It can be an entire chunk of code. You can assign it to a data frame. And we're going to do that a lot. So not only can you assign words to variables, numbers to variables, you can also assign whole code, code segments and define a new data frame. You can work with subsets of your data frames by using these assignments. I encourage you as you watch these uh, videos and you practice your code is, you know, ask a lot of, you know, questions. I wonder if this is, if this would work. What if I did this? Because that's how you're going to learn the code. You're going to try it out. You're going to see that, you know, it does work or it doesn't work. R is a, uh, you know, a, a language where punctuation really makes a difference. So, you know, for example, when you look at the pipe today, if you don't put a space between the end of the line and then the pipe, uh, you'll get a syntax error. And if you forget to pipe one time, it'll give you an error. And, you know, at the end of the GG plot, you know, when you put the plus sign, if you don't put a space sign in front of that plus sign, it just thinks the plus is just a continuation of the previous um, variable or command. So punctuation is important. Uh, and because of that, it's frustrating. The other thing I would say is that just be sure that every time you start a new session that uh, you both install your packages and you load them for every data set package that you're going to use library that you're going to use in uh, in the project.